Well, greetings everyone. Welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. Very quick video. This is just going to be another teardown. In this case, it's a Pioneer MVH-S501BS. Uh, we're going to look inside it, but the main reason I'm tearing it down is there's a fault inside here. I've had this in my truck for almost a year, and sometimes I turn on and it's completely dead. The reason I think something inside's wrong because I just unplugged it, banged it on my center console a couple times, plugged it in, and it worked again. So I'm going to look for obviously bad solder joints, mainly on this um, big pin connector. So, let's begin to tear down. Take our face off, that's always first. I don't know how this comes apart. I'm seeing very little screws, but the front does have clips on the top and sides. These clips are simple enough. Push them down on the side. Oop, this one popped back on. Oh, there's little pushies on the bottom too. Okay, so there's our front. Set this aside. Wow. So this is a digital media receiver, also known as a short chassis. This is a normal single den, right? Mech radio, it's a CD player. Right. Pretty straightforward. Why they're called short chassis, they don't have a CD player. Look at the inside of this thing, there's nothing in here. Right, so to get the top off, okay, the back doesn't need to come off, but I do have to take out some screws. There's this one right here. Oh, that's in tight. I'm going to set these into my uh, magnetic tray so I don't lose them, right? And this one above the antenna plug. And this top one on the heat sink. Not these two, that holds in your chip. I want to know what amplifier chip this thing has, because this thing has no internal power. So thank God I have an external 4 channel. Or else this thing would have came out a long time ago, probably. Pro tip, if you want to get the most power you possibly can, but you don't want to run an aftermarket amp, either get one of the Sonys with the Class D amplifier, or get anything made by JVC. Pioneers are great decks, but when it comes to their built-in amplifiers, they're about worthless. Okay, note the screw in the middle of the heatsink is longer than the other two. I think how this works is this front cage kind of does one of these deals, then just lifts away. But it does have little tiny, not quite locks, but a raise in the mold. Yep, and that's exactly how it comes out. Wow, this is the easiest head I've ever tore apart. Yeah, that's that's it. That is almost adorable. Okay, we have an ST Microelectronics arm. I'm assuming this is going to be your DSP and everything. It's an STA1080 underscore OA. We have this. I don't know what this is. This is obviously just a, some kind of RAM. Then we have our chip in the back. And you can see coming from the plug this big uh, filter choke we have. We have two filter caps. We have a 2200 and a 3300, both at 16 volts. Where's our Bluetooth? I'm going to say it might be this right here. So it looks like the back doesn't have to come off to remove the board from the bottom. Another thing I don't like about this head unit is I honestly believe it's Bluetooth 2.0 because it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to pair with a phone to where you can hit play and it actually starts playing. Put that into perspective, a 2017 Ford Fusion with the Sync 1 Bluetooth in the radio 
syncs up in about three to four seconds. This is the same thing. The front has to slide. However, there's a metal tab bent up here. They have to bend down or it won't slide out. So we'll just push it back. I guess we just keep uh, gently working it. Yep. Ain't that neat. They put one of these things here, these thermal conductive pads underneath the amplifier chip. I guess they do that because they know this heat sink isn't going to cover it when you're putting out, well, in the case of this, about 11 watts by 4. We have another chip on here. This is a BD37. 068 FV that's not what I'm worried about I want to look at our plug and look for bad solder joints okay so I got the iron heating up I'm gonna take off this protective or this clamp I want to know what chip this is I originally thought it might be a TA 7850 but the 7850 can do over 20 watts into 4 ohms this does not I'll link a video down below where they tested this thing and it was like 11 and a half, maybe 12 watts before it clipped. Useless. Okay, these ones are also the same length as the one that came out the middle of the heat sink. Woo! There's no thermal compound at all whatsoever. That's a great start. Oh, that's salty. This whole back has to come off to get to the front of the chip. But I'm going to do it because it's only three screws. I hope it's not soldered down. I don't think it is. One thing this Pioneer has going for it is it has six channel, four volt pre-outs. Right, so these screws that come out the back into the plastic they're short, but they have a coarse thread. All the other screws have been fine thread. This might be Pioneer's own proprietary chip, but what they won't tell you is they're just normal TDAs with their brand stamped on it. It is soldered. It's soldered down in this corner. Okay. That corner right there is soldered down and it is right there as well in here so it's soldered down in three spots okay let's remove those three joints there I'm almost out of my solder roll and there's nothing I can do because my radio shack closed oh this is that lead free shit I bet it doesn't want to melt at all this is definitely that high melting point solder I got my 40 watt iron turned all the way up and it's barely busting through these. What I'm going to try to do is kind of flood it with the normal 6040 and try to just suck it away. I, I got tired of trying to get the solder off. I'm just going to bend this tab up, whatever. Okay, it is a Pioneer's own branded chip. Yep. Okay, it is a Pioneer PAL014A. Okay, if I find what that cross references to, I'll stick it over in video editing. But for now, I'm going to bend this back and then do what I came in here to do, which is touch up solder joints on these um, connectors. I will re solder this thing back down there, stick its coarse screws back in. Just because I got to CD, not really. I am going to put some thermal compound on this chip. Even though I run an external lamp, I just feel like doing it. I put a little bit, this little bit of this stuff on a plate because the oil separates and you got to stir it. That will spread out a little better once we clamp the heat sink onto it. Which, uh, believe it or not, if you read the day sheet for these chips, these are actually really all they need. They do get extremely hot, however, it is within working temp. 
Okay, now we need the long, fine threads again. These will, these ones will be hard to put in because i got to straighten out this thing. This metal clamp. Okay, i got the back of this all bent. All bent up. These are the worst to try to remove. A double-sided board, plus it's attached to just a straight sheet of metal. Better off trying to solder a wire to a bare heat sink. My god, they, they actually use that high temp lead free stuff through this entire unit. Now that I think about what I just said, it makes total sense since these things are wave soldered. I pulled out a magnifying glass. This thing right here is the Bluetooth. It is a 4250A C95. It says it's um, Bluetooth 4.0. I don't believe that because it is so slow. It, it, it's unbelievable. Like my Anchor Soundcore 2 pairs. I can't snap my fingers, but it pairs in an instant. Ford Fusion 2017 with this sync, not sync 3, just normal sync, pairs in seconds. This thing, connecting. Connecting, connecting, and it rubs it in because it says connecting on this. Okay, so I soldered up a bunch of shit, put it back together. Well, the clamp back on it. Now I'm, I'm just going to put it back together now. I love this thing now. Again, it's one of these thermal conductive pads, and they stick it to the bottom of that multi watt. This here is one of the easiest heads I think I've ever seen to get inside. I don't remember how to put the bottom on. Oh, it kind of goes in like this, and then you gotta kind of clamp it down, right? Yep. That's exactly how it works. I got this little tab that was holding it. Bend it back, and there we go. It's all the way seated down. And now we need to put our screws back in. I don't think I've ever seen more surface-mounted components in a single board ever. I'm going to show you get these two screws down good because they're ground. Manufactured August of 2017. So this thing was only like three months old when I bought it. You have to put it back down normally and then it just clicks into place. Love that. That's one more long screw that goes right here. Snap this back on. Try to line everything up, of course. And there you go. There's your Pioneer MVH-S501BS. Hope you enjoyed the video. Knocked the camera over almost again. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.